Welcome to Game On. This is a program by the Boys and Girls Club of Rochester where you make the game. My name is Josh and you're about to make a card game. You have reached level one. Your challenge will be to make a card of your own. But first, to help you, let's look at some cards. This first one, pretty traditional playing card. It has a letter or a number, it has some symbols and some art, and all of the cards that come in the deck show the same back. These have been around for hundreds of years and inspired most of these other games. This next one is very similar. It's from a newer game called Love Letter. It has some art of a princess, it has a number, and it has a rule at the bottom. Again, it has a back that's shared by all the cards in the game. This one is as old as I am. It's a Pokemon. Shows some art of a creature. It has a name. It has a bunch of rules and information on it. Let's see this one. It's a unicorn from Unstable Unicorns. It has some art, a name, and then some text at the bottom that says, Dance like nobody's watching. It doesn't tell you how to play. It tells you something about the unicorn. This one's a forest. It's a place from Magic the Gathering. And it has some symbols again and it tells me kind of what it does within the game oh this one is an event it's something that happens it says a surprise dodgeball tournament this one is from five minute dungeon and it's an obstacle that you have to get past Let's see this one is something everybody wants money it's a gold from the game dominion and of course money probably helps you buy things it's something used to do other things in the game and this last one is another thing it's a sushi roll from Sushi Go. And again, there's some more symbols and some uh, scoring. It tells how many points it's worth. So let's look at all those and see what did they have in common. The most noticeable for me is the art. All of the cards had some sort of art. Some are really detailed, like this dodgeball tournament, and others just have a little bit of art. But either way, it tells a little story about what the card is. Next, they all have information. Some of the cards, like Charizard, had tons of rules and symbols and levels telling you how the card works. Others just had a little bit of info, like this gold. It just has a number. It tells you how much it's worth and how much it costs. Um, next, all of the cards had a front side and a back side. So there's information on the front, but on the back, there's not really anything. So you can see one side, but nobody else can see that. And finally, it seems kind of obvious, but they're all cards. They're all about as big as your hand, a rectangle, and they all kind of come in this shape that we know and love. So with that, let's look at a few ways that you can make your own card. This is stuff you could use to make cards. Paper, scissors, index cards, a ruler, pencil or a pen, colored pencils, crayons or markers, playing cards, and a penny. Let's look at five ways to make a card. Index cards already look and feel like cards. They'll save you time and you can decorate them right away. You can also quickly test rules for your game. You could take a card you already own and decorate it with marker or paint. Make sure you get permission before you do this to a card. You could draw rectangles on a piece of paper. This is super easy if you have a playing card that you can trace over and over. You should be able to fit about nine cards on one piece of paper. When you're done, cut out the cards and you're ready to decorate. Another way to make nine cards is to fold the piece of paper. You can fold it into three parts, and then fold it into three parts again, and then you can unfold it, and you'll have nine cards to cut out and decorate. And finally, be creative. You don't have to use paper. Here I used a cardboard box. Your cards don't have to be a rectangle. They could be different shapes. You can be as creative as you want when you make the cards, and you can be more creative when you decorate them. Once you've made a card, you can decorate it. Earlier we said that cards have art and information. Here I liked the art of this cat card, so I copied it and made it again. I decided my cat could use more information, so I used a penny to make some symbols and a little number circle, and then I added some rules. When I was done, I colored it to finish off the card. Stop. Did you make a card yet? 
you can't watch the rest of the video unless you've made your card. So go make the card and then come back. Okay, for those of you who made it, congratulations! You have reached level two. Take 50 experience points and you can move on to the next video. Next time we're gonna talk about telling a story with your cards. They all usually have art and they have some sort of theme. So how do you make a game that has a story? See you next time, bye. I wanted to share one last way to make a playing card. If you know how to use a ruler, you'll see that most playing cards are two and a half inches wide and three and a half inches tall. If you know that, you can measure out the exact size of a playing card or you can measure a playing card of a size that you want. This is also good to know if you're gonna draw a card on the computer because the computer is going to want to know exactly how big the card is.